Hello everybody, welcome back to Star Trek Online. We have a new featured episode on Star Trek Online. Um, I have taken a... I didn't think I was going to get a chance to record this episode, but here we go. Um, new featured episode called Echoes of Light. We are going to play this right now. Heed the call of the warrior. Claim the honour to your family. The Lucari have launched a new starship designed for deep space exploration. While the ship is primitive, it shows great courage on their part. Such bravery in the face of the unknown is truly honorable. Of course, they may encounter hostile cultures in their travels. If we are with the Lucari, we can find honor defending them in battle and demonstrate the benefits of an alliance with the Empire. Go now, and see if the Lucari have the strength to become worthy allies. Yes. This episode picks up on a storyline that um, we've seen in one of Dr. Ben Robinson's videos. Um, I forget the name of it. Um, it's the one where there's a... Um, it's one of the first ones after he comes to the tutorial missions. He goes on the... the um, Deep Space K-13 where he picks up his second bridge officer to Met. Um, the space station at the end of that mission got sucked through a time vortex thing um, and we haven't seen or heard of that space station since. Anyway, usual mission rewards, experience, points, expertise, featured episode, weekly reward box, and dilithium ore. For the first run through, we are getting a Nausicaan Energy Lance. This is a pretty interesting looking weapon. And we have the following disruptor based um, goodies to choose from. A beam array, um, which is fine. That's the kind of technology I'm using on the the ship I fly, so disruptors. Yes, I'll have a disruptor, thanks. Um, a science siphon capacitor. Um, I like the fact that this has a bonus to disruptor damage on it, so I will be using this um, console because I'm using disruptor-based weapons and I have all three tactical consoles are all boosting disruptor damage, so it'll be nice to have science console that also boosts disruptor damage um, we have equipped on our ship this um, disruptor beam array and the torpedo launcher because the two set piece I think from that this um, boosts oh no it doesn't I thought it boosted um, disruptor damage it's weapon power setting which does I increase damage but uh, it wasn't the kind of bonus I was thinking about. So we're going to look to replace this beam array here because this is only a Mark X and the one I'll get from the mission is Mark XII. So that's what we're going to take today is the disruptor beam array. I'll then have to replay to get the uh, console and the Nausicaan Energy Torpedo Launcher. Now this is interesting. Usually a, a torpedo does not do the same kind of damage as your um, beam arrays and whatever else. Um, so this torpedo launcher will end up in the back of the ship um, and the Nausicaan one will end up in the front. Um, it would be, it's, it's going to be good to have. Um, and that, that, that torpedo launcher will be boosted by my tactical consoles down here disruptor damage because it's doing disruptor damage that torpedo launcher will receive a boost to the damage so there we go that's the plan let's take the beam array today and we'll get other things sorted in fact no i'm going to take the torpedo launcher today i'll just change my Serve mind there. The Empire well. yes indeed we will okay so let's just return to space for some other reason he beams out So yeah, a bit of rambling from me there to start us off, but you now know what the plan is. 
<coughs> here we go, we're actually just near the Lucari system. Oh right, I'm actually close enough. This was called preparation, where I knew <laughs> where I was going to want to be, so I just made myself be here. Let's begin the mission. We have arrived in the Lucari system, General. I'm reading their starship is in a standard orbit there. I'm picking up some comm traffic. It sounds like Captain Kumarki is in the middle of a discussion with a Ferengi daemon. Take us to the Lucari ship. <laughs> We're not here to trade Daemon. Our mission concerns the Lucari. Oh, come now. I'm sure we can reach an agreement that is to everyone's liking. I'm prepared to offer you an exclusive once in a lifetime. Oh, cut the channel and hail the Lucari. You look well, Captain. Thank you. It's good to see you again, and under much better circumstances. You'll be happy to know that our star remains stable. We've not seen any Tholian ships since the incident, thankfully. The decision to explore was somewhat controversial, however. Many Lucari were resistant to the notion. We settled this moon long ago, after we were forced to leave our dying homeworld of Kentar. It was a journey for us. Once we found our new home, no one was very excited about space travel. Still, the exploration initiative passed. Considering my experience, my people have chosen me to command the LSS Concordium. It was an honor I proudly accepted. Our ship is ready to go, and you are. Let's have a little bit of information about your ship. A side story here the Concordium came from the Gorn. The Gorn were very keen to see the, the Lucari making uh, f uh, quick progress in getting out from their home world. So I wonder what the ulterior motive is, but there's a, a bit of there's a, a post on the official Star Trek Online website which tells the story of how the Gorn. Um, how the Lucari ended up getting the ship from the Gorn. Um, Ambassador Stas apparently gifted it, but there, I, I suspect there might be some other motive there. I don't know. We'll see how the storyline goes on. If I'm just maybe just paranoid about something, or that. maybe I'm just seeing things or or making things up in my head. I don't know. Yeah, the Lucari starship design was something that was done by having community voting contest on the uh, Star Trek Online website. They posted the six, was it a six designs, I think? Pretty sure it was six. 
they had six designs for what they thought the Lucari ship should be and they put them up in pairs um, so they had designs one and two and they asked the community to vote for which one they thought was the better out of those two then they put up the third and fourth ones which one was the better out of those two and then they put up the last two which one's the better out of those two and then for the three that won everybody voted again to see which one they thought was the best out of that three and that's a apparently going to be the uh, anniversary ship that comes out in February 2017 because that's when Star Trek Online has its anniversary date. Our ship is ready to go and you are. Let's proceed to our destination. For our maiden voyage I've chosen a star that is close enough to be within reach but still just outside the area of space that you've explored and obviously one that we haven't visited yet. According to your star charts it's a yellow white star called 20 Draconis. Why is it called Dra 20 Draconis? Wouldn't Draconis 20 be better? I don't know. Okay, let's go. Let's warp to 20 Draconis. Nice easy start for us all. Let's do head to one of the last asteroids then and scan it. Oh, gee whiz, there's a big in right there. Okay. Let's scan the asteroid. Readings coming in now. Large quantities of silicate, hematite, cafnium, iridium. Crystalline structures appear to be the result of deposits created under a heavy impact. Perhaps this asteroid was part of a larger one that broke up in a collision. Heading deeper into the field may yield more clues. Agreed, let's head deeper. Sensors are picking up some movement on the far side of the asteroid. Not simple orbiting debris either. Cosmosoans, they're beautiful. Do you have any information about them? They're called Gekli, sending you data files. We're adjusting our own EM band down to 0 0.002 cycles as well. Let's tag them with subspace data transmitters. Agreed. That didn't go quite right. Let's try again. Data's coming in from the Gekli. I'd like to expand the number of tagged subjects to optimize data collection. Let's get close enough to slip in with a pod and join them in their swimming. Okay. Okay, let's go to the feeding ground. There are signs of 
Okay. Let's uh, activate a deflector pulse then and see what's going on. See what lies ahead. Warp to the next area. Sensors are reading a swarm of comets passing by this stellar body. They look to have an orbital period of about 173 of your standard years. I'd like to know if they came from outside of the system and were caught in its gravity. Sounds like a good way to begin. Let's scan the comet. This comet is mostly ice and dust. There are indications that the cometary matter formed around a magnetic core. The other comets may be more interesting. Let's move to the other comets and study them closely. Okay. Excuse me. Take a comet core sample. And here we have the mining mini game from um, Dilithium Mines. Use the arrow keys and just keep the white triangular outline around the red circles. actually some people find this quite easy I, I don't like it and I, I just, uh, need to concentrate here on this I don't find this mini game easy at all we've seen the waveform matching earlier that one I like that's, that's very nice very easy Modify the wavelength and the amplitude of the sine wave till it matches the the one on the screen. Four thirty. That's not too bad. The core sample shows signs of magnetic radioactive matter. This comet may have seen some interesting particle fields in its wandering. The magnetic core must help to draw in material that formed the corona. Let's investigate the other one. Tractor beam the um, comet. Ah! Now the other mini game from the game. This this mission seems to be only a way of getting all the mini games into it. <laughs> the only mini game we were missing was the Omega one. There's me saying that the only minigame we haven't had is the uh, Omega one. What's the bet it turns up in the mission? Well, actually none, because I've played the mission on other characters and it's not there. It's like ice melting and refreezing, but it seems to lose a large quantity of energy all at once near here. I'm not sure why. The radioactivity should be steady. Something is perhaps draining the energy. Let's keep looking. Probe and see if the cometary movements have had any impact on the planet. 
Okay, let's do that. Take a closer look. We've seen many space-faring creatures in episodes of Star Trek and Deep Space Nine and The Next Generation and Voyager. The anticipation of finding out which one it is. Mm. already seen the Geckley, but we know that this one's not the Geckley. Let's make our way around the planet. There they are. Magnificent, aren't they? It's a far point jellyfish. Nadarian? Knadid? Well, I don't know how you say that word. Creatures are luminescent ovoids? I'm not sure how to describe them. They remind me of an aquatic life form native to Lucari Prime. There are living ones huddling close to the planet's atmosphere. They must use the heat and the planet's electrical discharges to survive. I'm sending you some files now. Okay, let's see what happens. Let's transmit a greeting. The color display must be a form of communication. I didn't realize that life forms could exist in this fashion, living off the heat of planets, feeding on the particles in space, absorbing radiation from the cosmos. There's so much to see. Let's head to the next planet in the system and see what's there. Okay. Take a closer look. I'm picking up residual levels of radiation. Oh my. I believe I know what happened to this world. Some kind of proto matter wave happened here. Proto matter? That's dangerously unstable. Not if you know how to resolve the chaotic turbulence with a toffee reduction. This was a recent event. Some kind of proto matter incident happened, and it wiped out all life on the planet. I think we should send an away team down to learn more. Agreed. Let's beam down and see what happened. Now, for anyone who's well up on what their um, Star Trek um, stories are like, we know that a protomatter incident is what created the Genesis planet at the end of Star Trek II The Wrath of Khan. Um, and it was responsible for regenerating the body of Spock for Star Trek Three: The Search for Spock. So is somebody doing Genesis Planet type stuff down here? Let's find out. Sure, I'll ever get used to transporters. Let's 
the initial scans suggest this area used to be inhabited, but I can't find a single trace of organic matter. None. I see some carvings on those canyon walls. Let's take a look. Okay. Let's just go over here and do a bit of scanning first. Duranium ore. Very nice to have. And there's another one over here. Trionium gas. There we go. I do enjoy that mini game because it's quick. It doesn't keep you hanging around for ages like the mining one. Okay, so let's see what's going on with this pillar. The walls of this canyon were worked by tools. I'm sure of it. Sentient life forms lived here. Until the protomatter detonation. This pillar here, it seems to be a sign pointing to that canyon. Perhaps a pathway there leads to a settlement of some kind. I'm reading metallic objects there as well. Shall we take a look? Yes, let's follow the path through the canyon. Look, there's some kind of large structure further down the canyon. So look at the size of that plaza. Some big temple type thing. These people must have had quite a developed culture. Let's take some readings up there. This looks like a town square or a ceremonial center of some kind. I see some murals on the far side of the square over there by that arch. I'd like to examine them. They might tell us more about this place. Okay, let's examine the murals. Bunch of people bringing gifts or offerings. These murals depict people bringing some objects to this place. Crystals or gems, I believe? They built their settlement around the site. I believe it was a place of great significance to them. The next mural may hold more clues for us. Let's have a look. Okay. Let's see what it is. It's the building process. This mural depicts the construction of this large structure. I suspect it was a temple or place of contemplation for the people. The crystals were revered by the locals. Perhaps even worshipped by them. We'd better have a look at the next mural, don't you think? Yes, let's examine the next one. Crystals seem to grow. The crystals depicted in this mural appear to be growing for some reason. I wonder if this is a symbolic or literal representation of events. Perhaps the structure needed to be modified to hold the volume of crystals they collected over the years. Crystals may well have grown through natural means as well. Quite the enigma we found here. I suspect there's more to be found inside. Getting there will be a challenge, however. According to my scans, these pillars are connected to some kind of massive mechanical structure. Probably the peak of technology for these people. I believe it's some kind of opening mechanism for the structure's door. Can it be opened by deploying some kind of device or using our tricorders? We could probably force it open, but that could damage the structure. And too much force could even collapse it entirely. I suggest we create a holographic forensic reconstruction. A holographic reconstruction? Yes, it would be based on analysis of things like footprints, wear patterns, and local construction. We can learn what people did here, how they went about their lives, and how they made the device work. 
we'd be watching a replay of history, roughly speaking. Let's start by gathering information from relics and leftover traces of the people who once lived here. Okay, so we're looking for old tools, footprints, anything that can tell us information about them. were used with opposable thumbs and indicate a likely hand span of 22 centimeters. Okay. We put our footprints here. Based on these footprints, these people had a stride that measures them at about 1.6 meters on average. The wear patterns here show us that people leaned against here frequently. This was a meeting and gathering area. Okay. Strange. These relics should be covered with dust and sand, worn away by time and wind. But they're all uncovered. No organic matter left and everything left behind in its place. Frozen in time, like... Like these people died very recently. Yes. The evidence seems clear. The proto-matter detonation happened only weeks, perhaps even days ago. We're going to need to make an accurate simulation to continue our studies here. I suggest using modified pattern enhancers to do this. Indeed. Let's set up pattern enhancers around the plaza. Enhancers online. The signal is strong and clear. Okay. Second one. Two down, two to go. Two down, two to go. That's three. One more and we'll be ready. That's the last one. All enhancers online and standing by. All right. The enhancers should give us a pretty good image range. Your tricorder can then act as the center of the network control for the enhancers. I can tie in my data to your tricorder whenever you're ready. Get a little close to the center of the square so we can see what happens. Okay. Note that the alien is using the pillars in a specific order. Yes. <coughs> it's kind of doing them in an X shape. They're making the murals match up on each pillar. Mm hmm. And I'm going to have to do the same thing. Looks like some kind of functioning priest or bureaucrat, I think, would unlock the door by turning the murals on the pillars. The top mural on each pillar seems to be locked in place for reference. We should follow the order they used on the pillar mirrors. If we can turn them correctly, I believe we'll unlock the door. Okay. Oops, wrong button. There we go. Middle one. Ah, oh, that don't match. Wait. Which one? Yeah, this was the first one, wasn't it? Keep going. Do you hear that? That's the first pillar set in place. Okay, now this one. Well, that matches, but it doesn't match the top one. So we've got to change it again. 
There we go. Now we see what the bottom one needs to be. That's two pillars set into place. There we go. Pillars are locked in. And there's the Starfleet Delta. That's it. It's working. Well done. Shall we see what secrets this building holds? I think I see another mirror inside the doorway. We should take a look at it. Indeed. Let's go and see what the hell happened to make Starfleet symbol appear in an old ancient temple in an area where Starfleet hasn't explored. Wait, that icon, that's the symbol of Starfleet. How could it be here, in a Bronze Age temple far from the Federation? This is getting stranger by the minute. We should search the temple for more murals. Yes, let's look for some more murals. Like, just round here. And we can see the uh, people who live on the planet there being greeted by three Starfleet officers. Those people in the picture, they don't look like the others. Yeah, they're from Starfleet, all right, but Starfleet of the 23rd century. 22-something. Is it possible that Starfleet contacted these people in the 23rd century? If so, why would they keep such a thing secret? We should head deeper into the temple and continue our search. Yes, let's search for more answers. I think the panel on the wall here can be pushed to open something. Okay. Those inner doors across from the panel are opening. Dear, did these Starfleet folks introduce this civilization to dilithium or something like that? These crystals look pretty bad. According to my tricorder, we reached ground zero. This is where someone detonated the protomatter bomb. From here, a self-propagating cascade of proto-energy radiated outward in all directions, washing over the entire planet. Could this have been a failed terraforming project? Doubtful. I believe what did this was built specifically as a weapon. There's no new ecosystem. All life was eliminated. I'm picking up a residual energy signature here. Take a look. 16 centimeter wavelength with a slight chaos leak. I've seen this before. It's a byproduct of Zenkethi technology. Zenkethi? Here? Sir, we found a derelict space station in orbit around this planet. It's unpowered and covered in decades of dust. It's made it hard to pinpoint in the asteroid ring. We aren't the only ones to find it. Several starships have arrived in the system and they're laying claim to the station. What should we do? Uh, we're going to go for a site-to-site -site transport directly to the space station. And make sure you guys keep the Lucari ship protected.
girl. The old K-13. We're on one of the old K-series Federation deep space stations, but how did it get here? What happened to it? There's a placard on the wall. Let's see if there's anything recognisable. It says Deep Space K-13. That station was lost in time over a hundred years ago. Lost in time and space. K-13 was in the Beta Quadrant before. Not your station yet. I'll be taking a look around. Then I'd see to it nothing like that happens, Damon. Coloss out. <laughs> I'm not very fond of Nosikans. Well, the force fields seem to be um, active. Okay, there's a disruptor turret for you. Bunch of Nausicans in here, not good. Get rid of the Nausicans. Okay, you think that's it? on this. Let's disable the security field. The technology is ancient but surprisingly functional, at least at a rudimentary level. They built things to last in the 23rd century. Nosikins managed to get partial power online but they did it in a hurry. It could go down at any moment. In the meantime I've managed to drop those security fields. We can access other parts of the station now. So is there anything else in the computer? Excuse me. Some log files on the computer, most of them garbled, but here's the last entry. Chief Engineer's Log, Supplemental. On my account, we've been hurled back in time to the 16th century. To make matters worse, we're a very long way from the data system. None of our shuttles are warp capable, and even if we could get to Earth, we'd be in the wrong time. In short, we're stuck. There's nothing to do now but wait and try to conjure up a way to get back to the This computer's lost the ability to link into the main computer, but with security fields down we can get into the other lab. From there we may be able to get to the main computer and lock the Nosikins out. That will keep them from bringing the fields back online or using the station to stop us. Let's read the supplemental logs. So, um, with no way to get back to their own time, these guys put themselves into stasis. Seems nobody managed to wake them at the right time either, though.
Looks like the doors are locked. We'll have to find a way to bypass them. Let's go in here. Bunch of Norsekins. Grief. Hardly give my turrets time to do anything. Okay. Let's lock down the main computer. Keep them from taking over any more of the station's subsystems. There's another log entry. Chief Engineer's Log, April 17th, 1570. Today we visited the planet we're calling Draconis 3 to collect supplies. The good news is a humanoid civilization has come there. The bad news? A potential prime directive violation. Our landing party was seen beaming in by some of the locals. We're hoping that doesn't impact their culture in any way. One thing's for sure, they can't help us go home. Their tech level is bronze age at best. Great. Okay. Let's continue on round. The station's so old and badly damaged, most of the security systems don't work anymore. However, if we can take over the central hub, we can lock it down and keep the Nausicans from bringing anyone else in. That sounds like a plan. This console here is glowing. Chief Engineer's Lock, August 6th, 1570. The Warp Booster Sled Project is officially a bust. When we tried to spin up the coils, we couldn't get a stable warp field. Yashvi and Arlington managed to shut it down and stop a breach, but the shuttle's impulse drive is shot. I hate giving up, but we just don't have the parts we need to make it work. So these guys were trying to get themselves home, but they couldn't. Kagan, stop trying to run through the wall. Just come through the door. She obviously had a bit of an encounter with the Klingons, judging by her face. Taking your supplements. Read all three supplemental logs and you get an accolade. Let's bring up a auxiliary power. Anything else? One more log entry. Of us went into stasis this morning. There weren't enough pods for everyone. Three of us had to stay awake. We tried 
Drew Lott, Devon, Sheridan, and I were the lucky winners. Since we're out of options, we've decided to go native and live out our lives under CONUS 3. Hopefully, one day our records will be found, and the people of Station K-13 will be remembered. Hmm. Position 431. When the shooting starts, let the mercenaries handle it. Handle this, Captain. The crime is trespassing. Let's get the flag. Oops. Come There we go. Be men of support drone. We need you back on the ship right away. Madrin and his Nosigan allies are moving to intercept us and the Concordium. Okay, not quite yet actually because we'll go and get this item of loot. What did we get? Ah, we just got some armour. That's pretty rubbish. Okay, beam up. You're welcome to try, I just don't think you're going to like the results. Right, let's get ourselves a battle going. See if we can get all the loot. Ah! We missed all the loot. All the chatter. Okay, let's see what uh, Kamarki would have said. Um, 
What did we have? That was quite an adventure. I knew Madron was greedy and treacherous, but I never thought he was willing to kill to get what he wanted. In spite of that, I feel like we've learnt so much out here, and for the better. I'd say that our first flight was a success. Now we need to share our discovery with everyone back home. I hope today's events will convince my people of the continued need to explore and to be part of the galactic community. With luck, we'll do this again sometime and soon. On behalf of the Locari people, thank you. And then we have Thrak popping up with... I'd say that these events are better described as harrowing. The Zenkethi have been quiet for years now. They're using protomatter bombs and committing genocide. There's also the problem of K-13. How did it even get here? I'll put in a call for the fleet to send repair teams. They can take command of this piece of history. All stations have reported it. We can depart on your orders, General. Excuse me. There we go, that's our mission over. It's been a slightly longer video than I anticipated. Well, yeah, I like the first part, lots of exploration, and then a mystery to be solved. Okay, let's hail. and in battle. They are not the push way some think them to be. I'm sure the Federation will be pleased to know we have found their lost space station. I understand there were Klingon warriors from the 23rd century preserved in stasis pods there. They've got a lot of catching up to do. Now then, this Zinkethi protomatter bomb you mentioned. It is a coward's weapon. But we would be foolish to ignore it. We will use all means, diplomatic and otherwise, to learn its secrets. Yes. Okay, let's get the... Um, what was I going for? The torpedo launcher, that was it. Congratulations, General. Hey. And I'm now level 52. Okay, so that torpedo launcher is going to the back. And in the front we are... Oh, wait a minute. There's a thought. We have a level XI. We're going to take the free upgrade to XII. And then we're going to equip it in the front of the ship. That torpedo launcher, in my opinion, is going to be far more useful to us than the other one. So I've got to replay that mission a couple of times to pick up the other two parts of the set. And I'll still need to replay <laughs> Dust to Dust to get better Kobali items. Such a huge amount of stuff I need to do here. Of course, we have the uh, featured episode weekly reward box. That's going to head off to... Uh, a different character. I'm going to transfer it to a different character on my game account to the um, one where it's going to be more beneficial. Um, mainly because at the moment I don't think I can use it. Um, I've got a, because I leveled up. I've got a new um, command, a specialization point to spend. So I'm going to go with uh, new. I think I'm going to go with violent detonation. And at level 52, the new bonus for me is that the Admiralty system has now opened up. So I've now got these things I can do. I can send my ships that I have from having leveled up. I can send these ships on various missions. Hey! Okay. So these are all the ships I've used when I was levelling up. The Burel, Bird of Prey, the Kodun, Katinga, Vorcha, um, the Vorcha Retrofit, uh, the Mata Raptor, uh, Kobali Cruiser. Currently I'm on the Nekvar Battle Cruiser. So, yep. Duty officer missions to be handed in. I've got three complete ones here. So capture Starfleet Ammunition Depot. Yep, we'll hand that in. 
Starfleet Photonic Research Centre. We'll hand that in. Scavenge Minefield, that's a fail, so nothing to collect there. Let's see if there's anything else we can do while we're here. Eh, eh. Let's see if there's anything interesting in science. Nope. Exploration. Not so much. Tactical. Zero gravity combat training. That has a nice little dilithium reward on that one. That's one that's always worth making sure to look for. Um, infiltrate the Orion Syndicate is always nice to do that. Hum has a nice, um, fairly large XP reward on it. I think that one takes two days to run though. Um, I can't remember. Infiltrate the Orion Syndicate. Oh no, it's 20 hours, so it's one day. So uh, it's not quite as long as I thought. Let's see what else we have here. Um, operations. Resettle colonists. Yes, we'll resettle some colonists. Twelve assignment slots needing filled, so let's just take whatever random missions we can get. Traditional Klingon Opera, yep, we'll have that. Uh, poker game, yep, can do that. Dabo. Uh, engineering assignments. Cannon turret upgrades. No more engineering projects can be done. Let's try some other ones. Security. Instigate defection. Yes, let's, uh, let's see if we can recruit a Starfleet person to our um, crew. <laughs> uh, let's just do some random ones here. Interrogated prisoner. Yes, we have a Federation prisoner, so that's fine. Blackmail a transit controller. No. Surgically alter an agent for insertion at a Federation outpost. Yes, let's do that one. Um, what else can we do? Yeah, we're missing stuff for that. We've got two slots left. Medical, let's do a couple of medical ones. We should be able to do some of them. Uh, medical supplies and antigens. We need one medical supply and 15 antigens. Okay. One medical supply. 15 antigens. Oh. There we go. Gee whiz. Come on. Job done. One assignment slot available. <laughs> More medical supplies and antigens then. Okay, medical supplies was 10, wasn't it? And fifth, no, 20 antigens, because it was the full amount we need this time. There we go. Let's try that. Yep. Oh, I only needed 5 and 10, so I've got too many. Never mind. Okay, so let's have a look at what the um, Admiralty does. Admiralty allows us to get bonus things. Uh, the Tour of Duty reward, you get two skill points on the Federation. On the Klingon side, the Tour of Duty reward is 30,000 dilithium. And the Romulan reputation, the Tour of Duty award is for Romulan Republic Universal Tech upgrades. All of these, very useful things to have. Um, getting all three to level 10, first of all, is a good thing. And then you can keep going through the Tour of Duty cycle. 
uh, time and time again to get the rewards. The levels are not dependent on the Tour of Duty level. When you get each one to level 10, you get an Admiralty ship card. So I'm going to start by leveling up which one. I'm going to go with the um, Federation one first, because then the skill point, not the skill points, the specialization points will be useful for developing my specialization. So here we go. We're going to just pick a, pick a, a, a thing. I'm going to go with this one because it's got 450 campaign experience on it. So let's set it to plan. Now, you notice the uh, there it says 20, 45, 20, but when you click plan, it's changed to 30 here. There is an event that's added in which has added 10 engineering points to the thing. So I've got to pick off my ships that will allow me to do this to the best of my ability. So I'm going to take the Nekvar battle cruiser there. And we're going to add in one that has 15 points on tactical, so the Vorcha would work there. But look, this one has plus 8 engineering and tactical per science ship. So do I have a science ship that could go in here? Uh, there we go, let's see what we have in terms of a science ship. How about that one? Hmm. Not much actually going to be gained by doing that, using that ship at this point. So let's just add in the um, Vorcha battle cruiser because that means now all the points are there. The guaranteed success is 100% and there's a chance to crit at 23%. So let's begin that assignment. Now I can have three assignments. I've got three slots uh, to open up other slots. I'm just basically going to level up my campaigns. So let's do... What was that one? That's a federation. Let's do the federation one. Let's do more federation ones. 252. That's uh, that's the highest out of the three things. I've got two pass tokens. I can use that to um, get rid of uh, a thing if I wanted to. And one of these two missions, that's uh, this one on the left, would then pop up and be available. I'm going to run this 252. Let's see what we get. Uh, the scene of the tactical rating has gone up by 10. Let's start by getting a high powers engineering ship slotted and see where that takes us. Okay, so I need something with about 10 on scientific, 20 on tactical. Um, so I need actually need 21 on tactical, so... Oh, gee whiz. Actually, isn't a ship that's actually as decent to that as I thought. So let's go with the Mirror Vorcha. That still leaves us two points short of tactical. You know, the success chance is now up at 99%, but I do like that to be as high as possible. So I'll just slot the Burrell Bird of Prey just to tip it up to 100, and everything is there sorted now. You can see I've got bonuses on my engineering and tactical side. So let's get that one going and then all three of these are all 90 so let's just pick one of them whoa plus 75 science quite a big thing but that one there almost covered it in fact it does completely cover it have I got anything else that would have done it no okay never mind let's just get that one going there we go and I have three admiralty assignments all queued if I'd chosen to do the Klingon Empire ones I'd have had the tour of duty assignment one could have been queued straight away. Now the Tour of Duty assignments give a lot more campaign experience points than other um, missions. So if there's ever a Tour of Duty mission, go for it. So there we go, that's the mission. Featured episode, Echoes of Light, and an introduction to how the um, Admiralty system works in Star Trek Online, just in time for the console players. In fact, I might even separate that off to a separate video. Um, so there you go. That's how it looks on a PC. The layout of how the, the, the Admiralty system will look for console players is going to be different. Very different. They've got a totally different user interface on the game. Um, when the game was converted to console, they just basically deleted the entire PC user interface and developed a whole brand new one for the consoles. That's it. Game over for today. 
This is Inferiority Complex playing Captain Kolos in Star Trek Online. We will see you guys in the next video. Bye for now.